If you want to increase your search traffic this year, you just need to follow the nine step SEO checklist in this video. Now, people like to make SEO complicated, but it really only boils down to three layers, technical, content, and link building. So I'm going to show you how to win at each of these areas in the same way that I've helped thousands of other people just like you to increase their search traffic. And while this video is focusing on the nine most important things you must get right this year, I highly recommend that you check out the full SEO checklist on my blog, which you can also download and print for reference. So the first thing you need to get right if you want to increase your search traffic is your technical foundation layer. This is the base layer that supports all of your content and link building efforts. So it's important that we get it right before doing anything else. So I'm going to walk you through the four most common issues that I see. Now, there are some basic expertise, authority and trust signals that I believe every website should have. Most people refer to these as eat signals, which lets Google know that you're a real entity that they can trust to send traffic to. Now, eat signals are in stark contrast to Amazon affiliates who like to remain anonymous, but the days of anonymous websites are over. You must list your business name, address, and phone number in the footer, about page, and contact page. Now, if you're struggling for an address to use, you can maybe use your accountant's address. If you're struggling for a phone number to use, we use CallRail with a pre-recorded answer phone message that delivers answer phone messages direct to your inbox. You should also use one of the many organization structured data generators and add that data to your homepage, contact page and about page. Now, it's important to note that your about page must have a picture of the business owner, the team or the premises. We published about this back in 2015 and told you exactly why it was important to have that on your site. You should also include bios of key staff members along with links to their LinkedIn profile. Now, if you're an anonymous affiliate, you can find a face for your site and then have them record an about the website video, an about them video, an answer phone message and also take some photos. This is how we create personas for all of our different sites. But make sure that you get a release form like this so that they can be the face of your site moving forward. Now, internal link building is more important than people think because Google said that the number of internal links pointing to a page is a signal about the importance of that page to them. They also said the context we pick up from internal linking is really important to us as well. Uh, so with that kind of the anchor text, the text around the links that you're giving to those blog posts within your content. That's really important for us. So a quick way to check if your most important pages have the most internal links is with the internal links report in Google Search Console, which looks like this. The aim of the game is to have your most profitable pages in terms of organic search traffic to be as close to the top of this list as possible. So download the report and delete any of the about pages, contact page, category pages or pages listed in your main navigation. Then what's left should be a list of your most important pages ordered by revenue from organic traffic. If it's not, you should fix that and you can do that by either adding or removing internal links where possible. This is best done with Screaming Frog that allows you to see all of your internal links to any URL easily. Feel free to take a look at my dedicated internal link building tutorial and video to learn three other internal link building strategies that you should be using alongside this one. Now, you've probably heard it a million times the last 10 years, but your website speed is critical to your SEO and business success because it impacts the bottom line in so many different ways. Firstly, from a business perspective, it means that you end up making less money with the same amount of traffic. Why? Because of significantly lower conversion rates and increased customer acquisition costs simultaneously. 
But from an SEO perspective, speed has been part of the algorithm since 2010 and Google have made many updates to favor speed since, including the Core Web Vitals update and the Page Experience update in 2021. Speed is also one of the first things we fix for clients because it nearly always brings an uplift in search traffic whilst also bringing immediate increases in conversion rates and reducing acquisition costs. Now, you want to be posting as close to 100% in the page experience report as possible, along with 90 plus desktop scores and 60 plus mobile scores in page speed tools. Now, every site is different, so please review my article and video that shows you six free ways to increase site speed. Right now, I'm using WP Rocket, Perf Matters, Cloudflare Pro on top of Kinsta Hosting for my SEO blog. But remember, site speed is never done. It never gets crossed off. It's something that must be monitored, maintained, and protected. Now we need to focus on getting the basics right because it's amazing how many small SEO problems creep in over time without you even realizing it. It happens to the best of us, so I assure you it's happening to you. The problem is all of those small problems can add up to a huge loss of search traffic, so it's important that you identify them and react to them as quickly as possible. Luckily, there's a couple of tools that we can use to help with that. First is Google Search Console, which is 100% free and the first place you should look for errors. Work through all of the reports in Google Search Console and make a list of errors to fix. This includes the coverage report, mobile usability report, and all of the enhancement reports like uh, breadcrumbs, review snippets, products, FAQ reports, and any additional reports you might see listed here. Once you have a list of all of the errors, you should go and actively fix them. As well as Google Search Console, you can also use a tool like Ahrefs or SEMrush to scan your site for a huge range of SEO problems, which will also notify you instantly if something is wrong. You can set the tools to run either weekly or monthly scans, completely automated, and get reports direct to your inbox. The most important thing to remember though is that you must act on small SEO problems as quickly as possible. Don't let the errors build up over time and then fix them all at once. You need to be proactive with the fixes to stay ahead of the game. Remember, to get ahead this year, you must take care of eat signals, internal linking, site speed and fix any general SEO errors. That way, you can be sure that you've built a solid technical foundation for both Google and humans. The second layer you need to get right with SEO is content. Remember, increasing your search traffic just boils down to having a good technical foundation with good content and good links. So, I'm going to show you a few strategies to increase search traffic to your existing content, along with the exact process you should follow when creating new content. First, let's get started by optimizing your existing content, which is usually one of the easiest ways to increase your search traffic, and it can be updated in a few different ways. First, there's some basic updates that you can make. Start by manually reviewing all of your existing content and updating any out-of-date information. Things like images or screenshots of websites that have changed, out-of-date information like prices, dates, trial availability, or even general product availability. And even simple things like fixing broken links and general styling. It's amazing how much things can change in a year. So you should review all of your content regularly and also use this opportunity to add any internal links to new content that you might have published since. If you really want to get Google's attention though, you should rewrite the intro of any content that is more than a year old and isn't currently performing in the search results. Oh, and don't forget to update any date or year mentions across your site. For example, dates in the footer or in titles. You can do a search like this to find any dates that might need updating across your site. This one gets me every year. So we have a recurring task every January to go through all of our sites and update dates like that. 
You can also add a table of contents to make it easy for users to find the information they want, but also make it easier for Google to understand your page and link directly to specific sections of your page. Adding them is easy. We use a Table of Contents Plus plugin, which either lets you add the Table of Contents box automatically to all of your posts or pages, or it lets you place it manually like we do with the TOC shortcode. Once you've added it, you'll see this collapsible box with tons of internal links to all of your subheadings in your article. That makes it easier for Google and humans to digest your content. FAQs are also quick to add and a very easy way to update your content. They make it more useful to the reader and more relevant to search engines whilst also giving you more real estate in the search results. Adding them is easy. Just Google your target keyword, look for the people also ask box and then click on some of the questions to expand that list. Next, pick out three to five questions that you feel are relevant and make a note of the answer that Google is showing. For the most part, this is going to be a 40 or 50 word text snippet. Next, add a frequently asked question section to your page and then list each question with a 40 to 50 word answer underneath each question. Last but not least, use my free tool to create your FAQ schema data and add it to your page. See the tutorial on my tools page if you get stuck with that. And don't forget, you can add links to your answers so those links will show in Google search results as well, but use them wisely. Now, if you're ranking on the first two pages of Google for a keyword that is showing a featured snippet like this, you should try and steal it. Pulling this off is easy. First, make a list of pages that are ranking in the first two pages of Google's results. You can use Google Search Console or tools like Ahrefs and SEMrush, which also allow you to filter the keywords that are currently showing a featured snippet. Then, just look at the current featured snippet and see what it shows. Next, let's take a closer look at the current ranking page and look at exactly what they've done by inspecting the source code. Perhaps they have the target keyword in a H2 tag followed by the block of text. Or perhaps it's a block of text with the target keyword followed by a table of data. Whatever they're doing, you should try and replicate as closely as possible on your own page, but rewrite the text so it's unique. Almost like you're trying to fool a teacher with homework you copied from a friend. We've all done it, right? <laughs> Once it's live though, you should inspect the URL with Google Search Console so that they process your changes as soon as possible. Then just sit back and wait. Remember, this works better for content that is already ranking on the first page with a featured snippet showing. But it can also be used for easier keywords on the second page if you're also updating the content at the same time. Next, you might consider using Surfer SEO to optimize your content, which will analyze it and compare it to other content that is currently ranking in Google. They look at over 500 different factors to generate a report that tells you exactly what changes you need to make to your content from an algorithmic perspective. Just use their audit tool to generate a report for your content and then fix all of the phrase recommendations in the terms to use section. You should also fix any of the other warnings presented below. Once you've made the changes, you can refresh the report in Surfer to make sure that your content is perfectly optimized. Remember, when you update any piece of content, you should also inspect it with Google Search Console so Google knows of the changes immediately. Now, creating new content to increase your search traffic is really easy if you follow the process I'm about to show you. Ultimately, we want to create content that is not only easy to rank, but also brings a consistent stream of buyers and leads. Focusing on that type of content is the quickest way to grow your business with search traffic. Now, all of that starts with keyword research, and it's no secret that my favorite keyword research strategy of all time is just to look at what is working for your competitors and then see how that aligns to your own business activities. 
you can download a free copy of my intelligent spreadsheets that will help you to find all of the easiest to rank for keywords in your niche based on what is working for your competitors right now. Then all you have to do is select the most commercially relevant keywords and start creating content using the template I'm about to share with you. Now, when it comes to content creation for SEO, there is a few shortcuts I want to share with you that will help you to create perfectly optimized content every time. First of all, you should adopt a writing style that is short and punchy, only uses two or three sentences per paragraph, uses bullet points, headers, and subheaders to improve readability. If you do those things, your content will be easy to digest. And if you need help with any of that, you can take a look at my tutorial that shows you how to create killer content. Now, my team uses Surfer's Content Editor to create perfectly optimized content. All you have to do is enter your target keyword and Surfer will start analyzing the top ranking results in Google to create a writing plan for your team to follow. It tells you how many words you need to write, which phrases to include, and how often along with recommendations on titles, headings, questions, and topics. Don't forget when creating new content to add an FAQ section and also try and steal the featured snippet, just like I showed you how to do when optimizing existing content. Oh, and don't forget to sprinkle in a couple of tricks from my SEO copywriting tutorial to keep things interesting. And if producing content is a major obstacle for you, I suggest you check out my 90 day SEO course, which shares my processes to hire, train and manage writers, along with all of the templates and tools we use to produce hundreds of thousands of words per week for our clients. The course also includes all of our SEO processes, which you can follow or use to train your team or to increase your own search traffic. But remember, first you should update your existing content to make sure it's still accurate. Add a table of contents, FAQ section, and try to steal the featured snippet. Then, once you've updated all your existing content, you should focus on creating new content targeting the opportunities you found using my free keyword research spreadsheet. You can find the link for that on my blog or in the description of this video. But remember, don't spend time creating new content if you haven't first updated all of your existing content to squeeze as much search traffic out of them as possible. Now, link building is a major problem for most people. So I'm gonna show you precisely how to figure out which pages to build links to, how many links you need to build, and how to build those links at what cost. So, if you're not sure which pages you should build links to, I'm gonna show you a super simple process to figure it out. First, we need to look at which keywords are currently ranking in the first three pages of Google and then pick out the ones that are the most commercially relevant to us. To do that, you can use the Ahrefs or SEMrush trial to see all of your currently ranking keywords and then filter them accordingly. You can also see some of this data in the Google Search Console search results report if you don't have access to Ahrefs or SEMrush, but you should be able to get access to that data for free. Ultimately, you just want to create a short list of keywords that are ranking on the first three pages of Google that will bring sales or leads to your business. That usually means avoiding the high traffic, high competition terms and instead focusing on those super targeted 10 to 500 search volume per month terms that appear much later in the buying cycle. The real art here is being strict on your keyword selections and keeping your eyes on the sales and leads rather than the search volume. Once you have that short list of keywords, you can move on to calculating the link gap, which is the second part of figuring out which pages to build links to. Now, calculating the link gap will tell you roughly how many links you need to build in order to break the top three rankings for a given keyword. Knowing this is important because once you know how many links you need, then you can figure out how much it will cost to attack any keyword.
The process is pretty simple. First, use Ahrefs or SEMrush to look at your target keyword and see if you can find sites of a similar authority to yours ranking in the top 10. If you do, then you can look at the backlink profiles of each of the top three results to try and figure out exactly what types of links are currently powering the top three rankings on average. Here we can see the number one position is a DR18 with links from 41 domains. But when we click into it and filter by do follow links, you'll see there's only 17 do follow links and only one, two, three, four of those have any weight behind them. Clicking back to the results, the number two position is a DR60 with links from 20 domains. Again, we need to filter for do follow links only and sort by DR. Here you'll see that there's only links from one, two, three domains that have any meaningful authority. And the number three spot is a DR21 that looks like it has three domains, but when we click into it, really only one do follow DR56 is powering that. So, based on that, we can assume it would take just four good links to compete with the current search results if our own page had zero links at the moment. That is how you calculate the backlink gap. Ultimately, what you want to arrive to is a list of currently ranking keywords that are commercially relevant to your business, along with an idea of how much it will cost to attack each of those opportunities. With a bit of practice, you can eyeball this pretty well. For example, with this keyword, while the number one position is occupied by a DR66 and 23 domains, when you click into it, there really are only one, two meaningful domains, which is pretty easy to win the page level link battle. This is also evident by the fact that you have lots of different DR sites ranking with zero, one, or two links. So that means that you could estimate that if you were to build just three or four solid links, you would get good results on this keyword. If you look at this keyword, you will see that the number one is a high DR72 supported by 20 links, but only 11 of these are do follow and only one of them is particularly strong. You can also see many relatively low authority sites ranking with one or zero links. So depending on your site's DR, you could easily take the number one spot with two or three good links here. That is how you decide which pages to build links to, whilst also knowing how many links you need to build at what cost with ROI in mind. Now, the actual link building part of link building is probably the hardest part of SEO. So, I'm going to show you the easiest ways that you can put your link building socks on and start building quality and relevant links to your website. First of all, I want to introduce you to the backlink blacklist, which allows you to check if a site is worth getting a link from or not. You can see exactly why a site is blacklisted, like if it's sold in a cold outreach email, and also see the screenshot, or if it's publicly sold on Fiverr, for example, along with the screenshot of the gig. You should make the backlink blacklist part of your link building process to help make sure you're only building links that help you. So let's talk about my favorite link building strategy of all time. That strategy is competitor backlink analysis. Basically, we're just looking at which links are powering the search results right now and then trying to get those same links for ourselves. In fact, I built a special sheet that analyzes your competitor's backlink profiles and then spits out a plan of attack which tells you which links you should replicate first whilst also filtering out the links you should avoid. If you want to learn more about the competitor backlink analysis strategy, you can check out my dedicated tutorial which steps you through the theory and the process in much more detail. Or you could head over to my SEO portal which shows you more than 20 different link building strategies that you can use alongside competitor backlink analysis. But let's take a closer look at four of them. 
First is event link building, which shows you some different searches that you can use to find events that are willing to link to you. It costs nothing to set up and you can partially automate the process. Next, you might want to consider testimonial link building, which is a great way to get powerful homepage links simply by telling the products and services you use every day what you think about them. You can also leverage podcasts to build high-end links nearly on autopilot by using my podcast jacking strategy. This leverages the basic fact that podcasts need guests and guests need links. So once it's set up, you'll get booking requests direct to your inbox every week. One of the other link building opportunities that many people overlook is with crowdfunding sites. This is a great strategy because it's simple, budget friendly and takes no time at all to set up and partially automate. Feel free to check out the dedicated tutorials for any of those link building strategies on my SEO portal, which also includes links to additional link building training and the backlink blacklist we talked about earlier. Or you can just take the hard work out of link building altogether by using the links at rank service to build all of the links that you need to close the link gap on your competitors. Now we need to talk about anchor text selection for a moment because choosing the right anchor text when building new links to your website is absolutely critical. The problem is that most people are just guessing what anchor text to use or using some general anchor text formula as a rough guide, you know, 20% exact, 50% brand, that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you the exact right way to do it because every search result is different. Now we use this internal tool that allows us to compare our competitors anchor text profiles with our own easily. It breaks the anchor text down by exact match, topical match, brand match, URL and some other categories so we can easily see where our competitors are versus where we are. So, in this example, we can see that my page is heavily over-optimized for exact match anchors and URL anchors, but it's under-optimized for topical, brand and generic anchors. With that knowledge in hand, we can then close the anchor text gap by building more topical, branded and generic anchors whilst completely avoiding any exact match and URL based anchors. So, I want you to remember, link building doesn't have to be an uphill battle. In the first week of every month, you should look at the top 30 results to see which pages you can build links to. Then calculate the link gap and cost for each of those opportunities. Then once you have a list of all the different opportunities and how much it costs to attack each one, you can engage your favorite link building strategy or link building service to close that backlink gap for you. So I want you to remember that SEO only has three parts to get right, technical, content and links. If you make improvements in each of these areas, you will see positive results. And I would love for you to take this video and actually implement what you've learned and then come back and leave an amazing testimonial like all of these other people did before you. Don't forget to check out the full SEO checklist on my blog, which you can also download as a printable PDF for your reference. And remember, if you need help growing your search traffic, you can either hire me as your personal SEO consultant, enroll for my step-by-step 90-day -step SEO course, have my team build high-quality backlinks for you at Links at Rank, or we can take full control of technical content and links with my full-service agency, Search Logistics. If you want to learn more about SEO, then please check out my SEO portal, which has over 60 free SEO tutorials, including more than 20 different link building strategies, along with tons of different SEO case studies to help you learn step by step over my shoulder. There's a ton of free resources in the video description for you, but I would love to know which was your favorite SEO strategy out of everything that we covered in the video today. Was it the eat signals, optimizing existing content, being able to figure out how many links to build? 
please let me know in the comments. Oh, and now I've shown you how to manipulate Google's algorithm. I would really appreciate it if you help me to get ahead of YouTube's algorithm just by hitting the like button and subscribing now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let me know what your favourite strategy from the video was in the comments.